Thanks, Dave. And thanks to Andy. Is this an amazing place or what? This just blows my mind completely. Radical politics meets Thai dipping sauce. <laughs> Well, my story with Howard Zinn starts in the early 70s, where I transferred to BU to study under Howard. He was a major motivator in that decision. And I have to so tell you that listening to Howard teach, not in a political environment, but in a teaching environment, was really something amazing, in the sense that he was very gentle, he was very whimsical, and yet he was delivering incredibly strong remarks and really advocating moving forward and, and getting involved. I took several classes with him and there's no question he was spellbinding. I could recite chapter and verse from a lot of his presentations. Well, I graduated in 1974, moved on to uh, quite a few years in high tech, and ended up in San Francisco. And I went to my gym and I was working out one day and I heard this voice coming over the video channel that I was uh, flipping through. And it was Howard and I knew that voice. And what it was, was he was being quoted from, you can't be neutral on a moving train. And I started watching, and it just brought back some incredible memories of Howard. Howard the activist, Howard the teacher, Howard the Superman. Well, I called him next, I emailed him the next day, and I said, Howard, I'm sure you don't remember me. I was one of your students, one of your thousands and thousands of students. But I'm not so after a little bit of up and back, we decided that the focus would be education, and in particular, supporting teachers. Because God knows, teachers aren't getting a lot of support these days. So the final question is, do we need the, the Zen Education Project? And the answer comes courtesy of Holt McDougall, one of the major educational publishers, and their new book, The Modern World History. And this is distributed across the United States, I suspect in Texas. And when you go to the Iraq section, the second war in Iraq, you can see this incredibly glossy, simplistic overview of that war, referencing terrorism, which all, we all know was not the case. And in the end of that lesson, there's a section called critical thinking and writing. This is the assignment to the students. Quote, Imagine you are a speechwriter for President Bush. <laughs> <laughs> Write the introductory paragraph of a speech to coalition forces after their victory in Iraq. So that's critical thinking, corporate education style, and that is what's coming out of Texas, and that's what we're all about. And that's why you're here today, we really appreciate your contributions to us. Every dollar that's contributed we've been, will be matched by a, another donor. So we will be 2xing everything you've been able to give us. And I just want to close by thank you, busboys and poets. Thank you, Teaching for Change. Thank you for rethinking schools. But most important, thank you, Howard Zinn. I'm Lauren Cooper. I work at Teaching for Change, and I'm also one of the coordinators for the Zen Education Project, which has been a gratifying experience because teachers all across the country are using the materials to teach in their classrooms that I wish my teachers had used. Uh, being uh, American Indian in Phoenix, Arizona, Arizona having the second largest population of American Indians, I remember sitting in a middle school history class um, as a Clarendon Middle School Comanche and reading a couple of paragraphs about how some Indians came and went during the westward expansion. And we're sitting there in the classroom thinking, we're right here, we're still alive. But you know, I would never say anything because we would also have read how some Indians foolishly sold their land or gave it up for some beads and pennies or they couldn't defend themselves against the US uh, military. So I just sit there, waiting for the moment to pass. It wasn't until I read A People's History that I felt a sense of dignity that I never got from any other book. At the, <laughs> At the Zen Education Project, we have over 14,000 registered teachers using the site and over 100,000 people accessing the website. 
More and more each day, we have people teaching a people's history and challenging their students to think critically about what they're learning in the classroom and what they're hearing from the media. Everything on the website is free. That includes the resources, the teaching activities, and through social media, conferences, and other methods, we're getting teachers together to share and to counter having to teach to the test or to teach to some status quo. So I thank you all for your contribution and standing in solidarity with us in bringing a people's history to the classroom. Thank you.